these are all reverberations and effects of stripping people of opportunity and jobs. Then we go back and say, oh, we have these food deserts and why are they just eating these things? Well, look at yourself in the fucking mirror. You know, that, that's like how I look at it. Roy Choi is known to many as the man who started the food truck movement with Kogi Barbecue, a delicious mashup of Korean and Mexican food. What made Kogi a hit was Choi's ability to blend different flavors, a talent he credits to his upbringing on the streets of LA. Well, I'm an immigrant here in this country, you know, I'm American, but you know, my parents came over here with not much and we had to hustle and uh, we moved a lot and we did a lot of different things to, to survive. It gave me an understanding of how not to be racist. Whether you do to the do-haves or don't-haves, you know, like it, it, it taught me to figure out my situation and be connected with, with all people. Choi now has over half a dozen restaurants, a New York Times best-selling memoir, and is considered one of the top chefs in the world. He now wants to take the ideals of street food and use them to bring healthier food to low-income neighborhoods. He's partnered with Michelin star chef Daniel Patterson to create Local, a new restaurant in the heart of South Central Los Angeles. Well, we're in Watts. Um, we're right in the heart of the Jordan Downs projects. The best picture I could paint is uh, a place filled with uh, history, love, smiling faces, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful people. The 1965 Watts riots left the neighborhood in ruins. And over 50 years later, economic hardship continues to define the area. Today, 40% of residents live below the poverty line and suffer from high rates of obesity and other health ailments. Los Angeles's health atlas show that people who live in Watts have the lowest life expectancy rates in the entire state. And Choi hopes that local can begin to reverse this trend by serving residents healthier fast food, with a menu that includes old classics like burgers and tacos, and lighter options including tofu bowls and fresh juice. What you see is fast food. So that way any, anybody who walks through these screen doors, when they look at the menu, I want them to have almost like an instinctual reaction to it. Like, oh, look at that, look at that, let me have that. That's a taco, that's a foldy, that's a bird. And, um, and as they eat it, when they're done eating, they're walking away like 15 minutes later, like, yeah, I don't feel like horrible, I feel good. You know, I feel like jumping over that fence right now. You know, like, that, that's what I hope. Choi's motivation for opening local is to combat food deserts, which are areas that lack access to fresh produce in grocery stores. But several studies have questioned the existence of these food deserts and their link to poor nutrition. Researchers say that it's not that people don't have access to fresh fruits and veggies, it's just that they don't want to eat it. Do you see it that way? Is it a question of access or is it a question of cultural preference? And if so, like, how do you approach trying to change that habit. Daniel and myself felt like food was the fastest thing that we could affect and that we and it was the it, it was the one area and loophole that we could like slide into because everyone has to eat. Uh, but really it's a tip of the iceberg of a larger discussion. Choi's argument is that it's more of a mental hurdle. Whether youngsters or adults make their decisions, you know, and lead themselves into vices or addictions or whatever it is out there, that's not what I'm trying to really talk about. What I'm talking about is it's the fundamental belief that we all believe that we have these choices, these equal choices. What local is about is about looking ourselves in the mirror and saying, listen, it doesn't have to always be a fight, okay? Yes, you all messed up, but listen, that's the past. Are we going to continue this for the next 50 years or are we going to start some sort of change where everyone has an opportunity? Um, and it's not just because of your cultural background or the color of your skin. While policymakers have taken a mandate approach to putting healthier food in low-income areas, Choi says he doesn't have time for macro-level forces to make change. He's looking to community solutions to fix the problem. Before local, he worked with students at Jefferson High School in South Central Los Angeles to develop a menu of healthy drinks and snacks teens would want to buy, and then gave them jobs in the new cafe selling them. How did that work out? Did the kids want to eat those type of foods when they had more control over it? Yeah, of course. I mean, it's about your choices again. It's about what you offer. It's about your intent. If you're lazy as a leader or a parent or whatever, or an organization, and if you just say like, your only choices in life are macaroni and cheese and frozen burritos and pepperoni pizza, and those are the only thing kids are gonna like or those are the only things that I as a parent is gonna, are gonna provide, then of course, the people around you are only gonna want those things. But if you break that and say, 
and just start from the, the premise of cooking delicious food or making delicious smoothies, um, and you just go from there, then whatever is in front of them, they will like, you know, because it's delicious. Um, and so what we do here is we lay a lot of groundwork and we ask everyone, like, we listen. You know, what do you eat? What do you want to eat? Uh, what do you crave to eat? What, do you, what haven't you ever had that you want to eat, you know, like that, that you wish you could eat? Um, and we start talking about the menu, we start talking about the food, we start showing pictures of who we are and our food, and, and we start asking real, real questions. I think the difference is a, a lot of times we end up in this situation where when you say the word like food deserts and things like that, where we feel like it's a privilege that we as a, as a privileged society can, can go and help people that need more. Our approach is the complete opposite, is we ask the communities what they want and if it's okay if we come in, you know, because once they give us the okay that, is, that they want us, then we work from the ground up together. Collaboration is important to Choi. The last couple years he's traveled to Copenhagen to speak to fellow chefs about the stereotypes of street food and the need to appeal to a younger and more diverse generation. Even now in this modern day, what's being written about Korean food or Chinese food or Taiwanese food is being called ethnic because the person who's writing it is, is not from those countries. So then anything outside of that is considered ethnic or foreign. To me, it's not ethnic. You know, that's who I am. That's what I grew up with. So it's like, um, I, I just think it's, it's really, it's about changing the dialogue. And that's exactly what the food truck revolution achieved. It democratized the dining experience by giving chefs a low-cost business model to serve up dishes to customers that pushed cultural and culinary boundaries. I'm really proud of what we did. It took the narrative out of one voice and it, and it, and it shared it with many voices, you know. And then so we got to tell our own stories. And then those became things that everyone was attracted to for their own reasons. Yeah, I mean, definitely more choices for consumers out there, especially. For sure, and, it, and again, it, it, you got to experience something on its own terms. Even though it's a very small thing, it, it allowed us to kind of see what our possibilities are when we don't like put race and culture and, and, and labeling in front of us. It's weird, like this country, like we want our, we still think we have these Puritan ideals, you know, like we're, we think we're supposed to be this one thing. And we will never admit that we're just like this crazy, like psychedelic, like gumbo pot. There is no central point. There is no like home base. Like we're, we're just fucking all over the place. You touched upon about the race thing, but do you see that getting worked out or is it still something that is being avoided? You mean as a as a dialogue as a larger as a larger country? country. We're we're a far ways away, but maybe through food the, the dialogue can begin. I'm doing this interview with you now. Um, you know the re the reason, no pun intended, I'm doing this is because you know I felt like you guys want to have these discussions. You know, um, it's going to take some time, but again, the way we look at it is we're not expecting local to change what's going on in this country all the way like within the next month. What we're hoping to do is just start the discussion and show some tangible like change. Choi hopes that his experience mixing it up with street food will help local usher in a new kind of fast food revolution. I already lived through the food truck revolution. In my lifetime, in the last seven years, I've seen before me people's whole, whole lives change whole neighborhoods, whole industries, whole stereotypes about how people used to talk about like us brown people, you know what I mean? Like about our food, about what was considered dirty and what was considered clean. You know, horrible racist nicknames and jokes and, and I've seen all of that change into you know, a huge industry that has affected this whole world. Well, the way I see this is if this is successful, then what happens is it's not just us. Then you have real estate developers, then you have investors, then you have uh, politicians all looking at these communities that they've completely abandoned and coming back and saying, hey, wait a second, I can invest in there. I can build a mall right here. I can build a movie theater right there. I can build a pizzeria and a baseball field right there. And we can bring in all these things and then start, and then we can bring in these jobs and then corporations and, and startups can say, okay, I can, I can invest into warehouses and, and distribution facilities and, and offices over here and I can give jobs out to the community. Um, and then all of a sudden we create a whole nother economy within the economy.